Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to show you some easy ways of installing the stock AMD cooler and also some cool ways to remove it when it's completely stuck. Keep watching to find out more. So let's go through first of all and look at the parts that we actually need to perform this process. So obviously the first one is going to be a suitable motherboard. Now on this particular instance we're using the ASUS XY70 Tough Gaming. This is just a standard AM4 socket so as long as you're using an AM4 processor from the 1000, 2000, 3000, 4000 or 5000 series the process should be very very similar if not identical. The processor we're using for this particular installation is a Ryzen 7 1700X, but again, as long as it's an AM4 type socket processor, the process will be exactly the same. When it comes to thermal paste, now if you're using the included stock cooler, you should find that there will be some paste pre-applied on here, so don't worry about that too much if you've got it in there. If you've removed the cooler and you're actually replacing one, then you will need to apply some thermal paste or again, use one of these thermal pads. So we'll be going through showing you how to do that as well. Ideally, if you can, before you start the process, just in case something should go wrong and you manage to mess up the thermal paste, it isn't the easiest of things to actually kind of get rid of, clean up. So ideally, if you can, have some paper towel ready, maybe some isopropyl alcohol, and also some extra thermal paste just in case you need to reapply. So that's it with the instruction. Let's get down to business. Okay, so let's start off with the basics. So this is your AM4 socket here. On the side, this lever which you push out to the side is the retention lever. So in the upright position, that is open, and with it in the down position, that is locked and closed. Please don't try and put your processor in with the lever in the down position. You will end up damaging the pins, so definitely don't do that. Other parts of this installation, we have the retention clips here, top and bottom, which are secured with four screws, one, two, three, and four. Depending on the processor cooler that you're using, you may or may not need to remove these. Also, when it comes to the back of the motherboard, there is this metal backing plate which is present on pretty much all AM4 boards. Now again, depending on which processor cooler you're using, you may need to retain this, you may need to remove it. Now for the easy part, if you're using the stock included cooler, you will need to retain this back plate. So we'll leave that in place for now. What we will need to do is to actually remove these fastening clips here and here. So let's go ahead and get rid of those first of all. So using a crosshead screwdriver, such as this one, this is what we'll need to actually remove those retention clips. Doesn't particularly matter which screw you start with. There are four of the screws, so you can just go ahead if you want to and just loosen off all four of them to begin with. Just a couple of turns to start. Then the whole thing should become loose and then you can go ahead and remove the screws in their entirety. Once you've undone the screws you can remove this plastic retention clip and put it to one side for now. Ideally you possibly may need these at a later date, we certainly will do for a later processor installation so don't throw them in the bin, they will be required. Also if you need to at some point to actually return the motherboard if it's faulty or something like that then you will need to put those back on and return it as is. So as you can see, now we've got access to the screw sections here and we've got our AM4 mounting plate. Now if you lift the motherboard up, now I suggest if you can, ideally put the motherboard onto something solid, such as the motherboard box, which is what we're using here, or onto just a solid anti-static surface. Top tip, if you have got the motherboard actually in a case already, normally there's a cutout behind here, so when the, uh, the screws are undone, as you can possibly see, the back plate will fall out. So if you want to, you can put some gaffer tape on the back just to hold this back plate in position or a, uh, a small piece of wood or some non-conductive, non-damaging block of some sort, plastic, whatever, even a pack of cards you could use put behind here and that will potentially hold it in place whilst it's led down. So now we can go ahead and install our processor. So if you take a look at your processor, this one is uh, slightly worn, but you can see there is a golden tag in this bottom corner. Now this will mark up with the bottom tag on the motherboard. Sometimes it will be actually printed on the board down here. You can just about see there's a tiny little tag left on this one. Looking at it from another angle, so we've got the retention lever on the other side now. So just in there, there'll be some writing saying socket AM4. So just make sure that that writing 
is facing the same way as the writing on the CPU itself. So to install the CPU with the retention lever, just pull it across to the side slightly and then lift up and put it into the fully upright position. Now you may find on some boards when you lift this up, there's a audible click. This particular one's a little bit older, so the click has actually stopped uh, clicking. But yeah, make sure it's in the fully upright position. Then gently get your processor and put it over the top and it should plop straight in. Now it actually hasn't here, so we can give it a little wiggle and there we go, it's dropped into place. Don't be too concerned about bending the pins, just be very gentle. The pins are very delicate, but as long as you're not too rough with it and you just kind of maneuver it into position, it should be absolutely fine. So you can find sometimes when you put it on, it will actually just drop straight in like it did there. But again, you may need to wiggle it slightly to get it in. Just be very careful, try not to damage the pins. Once you're happy the processor's in and it's flush all the way around, then you can get the retention arm, lower it down, you will feel some resistance, push it all the way down, and then it will click into place at the very end. Now we're going to give you a slightly wider shot of that process. You heard the click then. So there is the CPU socket open, arm fully up, and with the processor with a little gold tag in the bottom corner, and we'll just put it on, and there we wiggled it into place, and that is flush all the way around. So now again, we can put down the retention arm, a little bit of resistance there, and it clicks in on the latch on the other side. I'll do this again on another angle, just so you can see it slightly better. So here we are from another angle. There is the retention arm, as you can see. So we're just gonna push the retention arm this way slightly, away from the socket, and that will release it into the fully upright position. Again, taking note of the writing actually on the socket there, and also the writing on the processor, which you can just about see, this one's a bit quite worn. And then all we're gonna do is just gently position the processor over the top. Again, this hasn't gone in fully, as you can hopefully see. So we're gonna give it a little bit of a wiggle, move it slightly. And there we go, it's dropped into position. So again, you may not find it goes in straight away first time, again, depends on the angle you're doing it. So it's quite easy just to move it around, just be very careful with those pins. Once it's in position, again, push the lever down, we will get a little bit of resistance there. And in the final bit, you can push it down and it will clip over this little clamp here. And this will hold the processor in place. One final check you can do just to make sure the processor is fully locked in is with a little bit of pressure on the sides, just gently try and lift the processor up. Very, very minimal lifting pressure required and it should not come up. Obviously, if you try it with the arm in the up position, then it's gonna come out much easier. So there's a, it, it will move around. So you can tell if it's actually locked in or not with that little test. So lock it in position and that is it. Our processor is fully installed and waiting for a cooler. So let's do that part next. So now we're ready to install our cooler, as we said. So this is the stock AMD cooler. This is actually the uh, Wraith Stealth, I believe. Not normally the cooler you'd use with this particular processor, but generally this is included with most of the AMD processors up to and around the Ryzen 5600 kind of range, 3600, that kind of thing. Sometimes you get the bigger ones, but essentially the process is exactly the same and the screw mountings are the same also. As you can see from this one, there is no thermal paste on there because that's already been removed. So obviously if you do have thermal paste on yours already, the next step you do not need to do, you're absolutely fine. But for those of you that don't have any thermal paste or you're replacing the thermal paste on your cooler, then you will need to apply some thermal paste, which we're gonna go ahead and do right now. So the next part is to actually apply some thermal compound to our processor. So we're gonna be using Arctix MX4 thermal compound. You can use whichever compound you prefer. Um, we picked this up very cheaply, so and it works very well. So it's worth using. So what we're aiming to do is to do a small line somewhere towards the middle of the processor. It doesn't have to be exact because it will get squished out. And ideally we're looking at a kind of strip somewhere between five to 10 millimeters in length. So start off towards a slight offset, a little bit of pressure on the back, and just a small line there. That should be absolutely fine. So what I'll do now, 
I'll spin it around slightly and I'll put a tape measure by the side of it so you can actually see how much has gone on and get a better idea for yourselves. And there we go, there's a little close up there just to give you an idea. So like I said, somewhere between five and 10 millimeters of uh, paste should be absolutely fine. So we're somewhere in the region of just slightly under 10 millimeters there. So just almost a centimeter. But just to give you again, an idea and some sense of scale. Now obviously, depending on the paste you're using, you may find some is slightly wider, some is slightly narrower. And don't worry if it moves around or you touch it just make sure you wipe it off after with a tissue cloth. But yeah, that's absolutely fine. So more than adequate, that is what you should be aiming for. Obviously, if you're using a thermal pad, then you won't need to do any of this. Just put the thermal pad towards the middle and line it all up. So now looking at the board itself, as you can see, we've got our exposed screw holes, four of them. And if we look at the bottom of our cooler, we can see there are also the four screws. So essentially we want to match up those four screws with the four threads in this back plate. So with the cooler, the AMD logo, ideally you want to have it away from your RAM slot so it doesn't interfere with any of those. Although if you've got particularly big heat sinks over your VRMs there, you may need to twist it around 180 degrees so it is actually going over this way. Obviously your RAM sticks and motherboard may be different, but just choose whichever way it needs to go. Now what I tend to do with these screws, because it is sometimes a little bit difficult to get it all to match up first time, I would start in one particular corner and line up one screw in the corner first of all on an angle, so drop it down so it's in that bottom screw and then try and match up the opposing corner. So just drop it down so it's roughly in position. And you should find then it is pretty much 100% lined up. So let's give you some other angles of that so you can see what that looks like. So there we go, there's a slightly zoomed in picture and you can see the, the screws are lined up with the bracket on the bottom. Hopefully you can just about make that out. So it doesn't have to be uh, exact, just uh, pretty close. And if we spin the board around onto the other side a little bit, you can see there the screws are kind of almost touching the back plate, but not quite. And you can see there the angle there, see the screws are just above those brackets there, virtually touching, but not quite. There you go, so that is uh, all four of the edges. So you should find that the screws are pretty much touching the actual threads in every position. If they're not touching, or there's a, a more than a one or two millimeter gap, then your back plate is not in the right position. So let me show you what that would be like. So if we raise the board up slightly, the back plate is gonna have a tendency to drop out slightly. So if I lift it up there, you can see, you can now see the screw holes. So we'll quickly zoom in on that so you can see a little bit better. So you can just about see there, there is a very fractional gap between the back plate and the actual threads there. So if we drop the motherboard back down again, you can see it just pushes it through that little bit extra. And that little bit extra is gonna be the difference between you successfully being able to screw this in and not being able to do it. This is why at the beginning of the video, I did mention about possibly putting the motherboard on something solid or perhaps putting some kind of block underneath the motherboard just so that it pushes these the back plate screw holes up a little bit. So hopefully that is uh, cleared up that for you. So now we're ready to actually start screwing the cooler down, which is the part which most people absolutely hate. So now we're ready to start screwing up. Not literally, just uh, tightening these screws up. So what we wanna do is where they're actually matched up, we're gonna apply a little bit of pressure. These are spring loaded. So you will need to put a little bit of pressure in, but don't do it too tight. So what we wanna do is just do a little bit of pressure and gently do about three turns, maybe four, and that should just about start threading in. So for this particular one, that's absolutely fine. So what we wanna do now is now we've got this side in, we wanna to go to the absolute opposite other side and do that one. So I'm gonna spin the board round a little bit. So now we wanna do this one because that is the kind of the, the polar opposite from this one. Now potentially you can also see 
that now the actual screw is raised up very, very slightly. So we are going to need to have a little bit of pressure on the board and also the fan. And then we're going to try putting the screw in. Now, if you're not too sure if it's going to screw, if you do it in the opposite way, so undo, you should hear that click. I'll get a bit closer. So that is the thread going past the thread, supposedly. So what we do is do the same thing. So one, two, three, four, and then release the pressure. And that's it. So we've got this one and this one connected. So we've got equal pressure on both sides. So the actual back plate is going to remain where it is. So now we can go ahead and do the other two corners. So I'm going to do the opposing one again. So we'll just push this round and now we can do this one. So again, what we'll do is put the thread in there or put the screwdriver in there rather, get it into the thread and a little bit of pressure on the top there. And we'll go in reverse. And that is secured in there, so that is great. So now we can spin the board round again and do the final one, which is in this top corner now. So again, applying a little bit of pressure actually onto the, the frame and screwing at the same time, a little bit of pressure on the screwdriver, about four or five turns. And then we should see that it is all four screws have engaged at least partially. So I'm gonna lift the board up now and you just might see there are some screw threads which are just about barely visible. Uh, we spin the board around, you can see on that side there, still a little bit coming through. Try and get onto the other side. And you can just about see there, the screws are all started. So that is excellent. We've, um, we've managed to get it on first time. A lot of that is down to applying pressure onto the actual CPU cooler and making sure that there's equal pressure pushing that back plate up. So if we turn it over now, we'll take a look at the back plate. You should find that it's completely flush all the way around. A little bit of a long winded process, but certainly it's better to do it now than have to reapply it later. So I'm just making sure that that gasket around the outside is all completely flush with the board. So now you can uh, breathe a sigh of relief and you know that you've done it as well as you can. The next thing to do is to go around and do up all four screws in a crisscross pattern until they won't screw up any further. So we'll start in one corner, about three or four screws there, three or four screws there. We'll do this one. There was five screws there, so that one was a little bit less. And then we can do the final one, getting about four or five screws. And just do it until it won't screw any further. They are threaded, so they'll only go a certain amount of distance. The last thing to do is to plug in your CPU cooler fan header into the appropriate header. Now, this board's got two, CPU one and CPU optional. Well, we can use either, so I'm just going to stick it in there. Once you're done with that, you can then cable manage if you wish to, yeah, that should hold it into place. So there we go, that is our AMD factory cooler, fully installed and ready for the rest of the build. So there you go, there are some uh, tips and tricks on how to get your standard AMD cooler, the Spire or even the Wraith Stealth or any similar processor on your AM4 rig. Hopefully this video has been useful to you. If it has, don't forget to drop a like and also, if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis, hit that subscribe button and the chime icon, and you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.